character and personality of those who are developing the software. So, uh, you know, enough about the group. Let's get into the crew. So uh, as you can see, we're a pretty flat organization here at Ablesoft. We're pretty much exclusively lieutenants, um, but these are all the people that make the magic happen from uh, development to uh, marketing and admin. And actually, uh, Lieutenant Michelle and Lieutenant Lisa will be doing our spinner booth at the breakout later today. So uh, stay tuned and, and try to check them out and see if you can win a local gift. Um, in case you're wondering why the jumpsuits when we're not officially pilots, it does get quite cold in the office. Um, a lot of the times we're, we're, we're forced to turn down the heat for the sake of energy efficiency. Um, and despite this flat organization, even we have a boss looming over our heads with ever increasing standards that we're uh, trying to meet. Um, yes, that, that is our, our dad and he is pretty much a drill sergeant. Um, <laughs> And uh, in case you're curious, uh, a position here does come with uh, cheap knockoff AD aviators and uh, fake dog tags. So yes, that is a, that is a perk. All right, so we've been operating for 26 or so years and there's been a variety of, of different work and projects we've seen, uh, but a lot of them can be broken down into kind of four primary buckets. Uh, the first one being Excel to applications. So that's just as it sounds. It's taking disparate Excel sheets. Uh, maybe it's a robust and intricate process, such as a, a quoting process or where you're tracking information and saying, hey, let's update this to an application, put a database under it, give more users to it. Um, so that's a large portion of our projects. And then there's tying together systems. Maybe you have two different systems that aren't quite talking together. You need them to better communicate. Depending on the ERP package, we can develop API that will help facilitate the transfer of data between the two. Uh, and then custom reporting. Um, a lot of times that just comes down to consolidating of information and having a simple interface for a general user to be able to access. Um, we're very familiar with that and uh, giving the centralized nature so you can use different analytic tools, whether it's Microsoft Power BI or Tableau or whatever is out there to do better visuals of the information of what's going on. And then of course, there's just general support. Uh, whether it's an old uh, Microsoft-based application you have in the past, or maybe it's getting advice on moving to QuickBooks or looking at different packages, we're just a phone call away and we try not to be too scary. Um, so those are kind of the main buckets. All right, so avoiding the danger zone. Although it's a great song, it's a place we don't necessarily want to be in. So basically the mission here is enabling the virtual workforce. There's increasing uh, demands coming from users. Uh, on site, it's difficult enough with data systems. How do you do it when they're virtual? Well, so there's three challenges that we're going to speak to in overcoming in order to avoid the danger zone and support our virtual workforce. Um, scenario number one, uh, dated systems. Scenario number two, uh, you have manual processes. And scenario number three, higher demands of information from the users. I'm sure all of these sound painful and familiar, so uh, let's get into the therapy. All right, so scenario one, dated systems. Um, I'm sure you've all uh, been exposed to this to some case or another, so maybe it's having applications that are on unsupported technology currently, or maybe they're applications that are to be unsupported. So it could be an application built for Windows 7, or maybe it's an older Microsoft Access-based application, or WebForms, which is a web-based uh, framework that is going to be um, retired by Microsoft and not supported. Now, of course, with any unsupported technology, there's risks there. Um, the companies that create it no longer are liable for pushing out the updates or preventing them from getting compromised and no future updates as well. But obviously, when you have a uh, remote workforce, even having VPN solutions to access that software isn't necessarily going to solve the issue. So there's inherent security risks there as well. So uh, I guess, uh, what would be the Ablesoft Top Gun solution to this, Eric? Make that set up. Uh, so risk can be avoided by bringing your current application into the 21st century, just like old servers that need to be upgraded and brought up to speed. Um, so too do your applications. We can help leave you less vulnerable to yesterday and today's threats. Um, updated systems can also take advantage of updated encryption and ways of pass passing data back and forth. Now with systems being hosted all over the world, uh, we can help provide that peace of mind whether your data is being transferred down the hall or across the country. Uh, more than security though, an updated application can take advantage of today's workflow of quick updates, easy deployment, 
better information, and therefore less stress for you and your IT staff. Oh, very cool. Well, we'll put. Thank you. Man. All right. So that's scenario one. Scenario number two: uh, manual processes. Um, you know, to a certain extent, uh, having manual processes is necessary for every business, but it's to the degree of that extent. So maybe you have uh, highly paper-based functions um, that there's still no kind of technology you're interfacing with. Or once again, back to that culprit, heavy Excel-based processes. You know, Excel is a great tool, but when it comes across spanning across users and using a large amount of information, um, it has its shortcomings. So what are the consequences of as people are pushed off virtually and you have to access them? Well, obviously without a technology interface, they cannot e easily access that. Um, you, those remote, remote workers that are used to having their, their processes um, on site and being on site and carrying them out uh, no longer can do so. Or if you're transferring that to another employee to carry out, there's a lot of tribal knowledge that without a system, without a formal process is, e is difficult to do. And then with all of that, uh, you're unable to make data informed business decisions, obviously, when you have manual processes. Why? Because the information isn't being captured. You can't look at historical trends and it's more of a reactive um, scenario. So I guess with manual processes, are we just doomed or is there a solution? Well, I think we have a solution for you guys. I bet you do. <laughs> um, nowadays, with many people working from home, um, some of the manual processes that were required are put under stress. Um, due to the remote working environments. Um, we can help take a manual or paper heavy process and develop a solution that is flexible and works where you work. Um, an example of one customer we were able to support had multiple plants um, in locations and they had the, the same beginning and end results, but the intermediate steps of how they got there was different. Um, and of course, if you know, you're trying to run a streamlined company, you want your processes to be the same throughout each location. Um, so we were able to come in, help them streamline that so that um, all their people kind of has been some of the tribal knowledge are learning the same thing. So no matter if, you know, Joe Schmo is gone one day, he, someone else can be plugged in and, and do that same thing. Um, another example of helping one of our customers was to sync their contacts between their custom application and their Outlook, their Outlook contacts. Um, so with that, instead of each person maintaining their contacts separately, we were able to develop a mechanism to sync personal and business contacts to their Outlook profiles. Oh, how'd that work? It's going well. Going well. Oh, current. Excellent. All right. And then scenario three, uh, just generally put information access. Uh, perhaps you have some old school legacy applications that uh, employees are used to using when they have access on site or once again, back to that Excel based process culprit. Um, and this just comes down to uh, the request for information. Um, it, may, it may be in a type of business where uh, a lot of employees have easy access to information on site, but when they're virtual, it's more difficult to get to those systems. And uh, once again, it's removing effectiveness for those remote workers. And maybe from an IT support perspective, there's a lot of re requests where you're trying to get people the same information over and over. Um, and that takes time and pulls away from the day-to-day -day things. And, and once again, unable to make data-informed business decisions um, if they don't have access to that information or it's not readily available. So I'm guessing you're going to have a solution for this one as well. Yes. Uh, if you said no, that would be a very bad presentation. <laughs> In today's world of data and mobility, uh, we can bring new life to your existing applications or new applications. We can help connect your existing data to analytic applications such as Power BI to help get deeper meaning from your data that you currently have. Um, another solution that we can provide is a, a web-based approach. To, um, so with that, obviously, you know, right now you are most likely working from home in your pajamas and your slippers and you're not at your normal desk. So, with the ability of having a web-based system, um, you can take your work with you on the go, whether it's you know simple tasks from your phone, um, laptops, or you know even when you're back in your desk, we can help you take care of that as well. Yeah, cool. And uh, so if they have an existing application with let's say SQL database, could we then do a you know web-based interface for them to extend across users? Yeah, so we can take your existing data, um, you know if. if bring your existing structure over as well, update that, or if we need to create a new SQL table structure, we can do that as well. Bring it over all your current things and then apply a web-based system on top of that. Okay, uh, very cool. All right, so, so basically our approach to all of these scenarios, shocking from a software company, is to address the underlying issue of the systems. Um, you know, Whether it's a dated system and just, hey, taking the plunge and updating the app, 
Uh, maybe it's you have a manual process that's you, you feel the pain extra because you have a virtual workforce who don't have access to it. Supplement with applications, start small and grow it from there. It doesn't have to be a crazy undertaking right off the get go. And then it could just be higher demands of information. You, you want to better distribute the, the data that you already have so we can build a web based extension uh, to get the users the information that they want. Um, so what's an important piece? We don't want to get too technical in this area. But um, I think it's relevant to talk about some of Microsoft's new technology because uh, custom programming has changed a lot and evolved over the years. Uh, our goal in helping uh, small and mid-sized companies is to think of how can we create the software more effectively, more cost effectively, so we can increase our customer base and have them happy and excited customers so you can continue to innovate and bring in new processes. So our goal is to have quicker time to value um, not spending a lot of the time getting these projects start up and spun up, but focusing on the business logic. Um, we want them to be higher cost effective so we can make you believers out of custom software and then built for the long term. Um, although new technologies are coming out continuously, a lot of times the under, underpinning tech or the programming language that it's written in can actually be um, retained. Um, we've had customers that are using the same application we built 20 years ago and it functions great and is still supported. So behind that um, is the, on the left side, you can see the ASI tech stack. I'm gonna speak very generally here, but there's three kind of platforms in which you can think of. There's the Microsoft technology piece where they're pushing out new programming um, frameworks and technologies that you can repurpose across time. Uh, then there's the ASI core that we develop on top of that because maybe there's more business specific things we see across projects that we can create to get ahead with projects. And then there's the customer layer, which is the specific to the business we're working with, their custom programs um, and the language that they need in order to carry out the functions. So you can think of almost like a tier of Legos and pre-building the certain areas. And at that core of that is something that we created called the ASI Genie. Unfortunately, I didn't come up with the name. I think, no, it wasn't you, was it? It was Alan. It was a collective agreement. It was Alan. Okay. Well, and can you can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. So the the ASI Genie, the um, end result is you literally click a button and it creates the um, scaffolding and the baseline for any new um, application. Um, so kind of what all makes this possible is the the .NET Core five that Microsoft has been um, kind of coming out with. Um, it's currently production ready, so we have, in the last couple months or so, um, built upon our existing core onto this. Um, so kind of what Ben was saying with the ASI core, um, that entails the, the data services, the, um, the look and feel, the theme of the application, the navigation of the application, custom controls that we're developing, um, all of that to, to deliver a product um, that the customer, you know, can take anywhere. It can be a mobile application. It can be a desktop application. Um, kind of what he said where um, it's just something that we can put together and create to make it easier for, for us to develop and then deliver a product to our customers. Yeah, I think you said uh, you click to generate, but actually we're saying you rub the genie. Right, yeah, rub, rub the, the lamp. Rub the genie lamp. Yeah, we're, we're, we're still working on that. Yeah, it's in the earlier stage. It will be better in the future process. Um, all right. Uh, with that, um, thanks for coming to our presentation, uh, getting up and, and checking in. We hope it was semi-stimulating, uh, entertaining, and a little informational. Um, Michelle and Lisa, they're going to be doing our spinner booth on the breakout where you can win some cool local gifts. Uh, that'll be very cool. Uh, please feel free to check out our website or send us any questions if you had, have anything. Um, in case there's anything else, uh, are you good or what do you think? I think we're good. Maybe we should continue. Kick off the music. Let's do it. Danger Zone one more time. All right, cadets, dismissed. Have a good day at TechX. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.